I'm going to talk to you about commitment tonight, but not in the way that you might think. <laughs> I googled commitment because I google everything, and because I wanted to know what it is about this word that makes us so uncomfortable. I'm thinking it might have something to do with definition number two. For some of us, big commitments get this scary definition because who wants to limit their freedom? But there are small things, fun things, that could benefit from our commitment, and we don't even go there because we're afraid of missing out on something better. <laughs> because we don't want to limit our options. We only live once. But the only thing that we stand to miss out on is an opportunity to enjoy the things that we like doing. And if we reframe how we think about commitment, if we apply that first definition, then commitment is actually an opportunity for us to be more free, which makes no sense. Allow me to explain. This is a picture of me with my first fish. I'm only getting away with this photo because my sister's not here. Um, <laughs> after, <laughs> sorry, Fran. After a week of trying to catch a fish, success, and I proceeded to cart it around and show it to every member of my family for the better part of 30 minutes. At which point, I informed my mother that it was time to put the fish back in the lake. <laughs> She informed me that that was not really an option. <laughs> Big lesson for a six-year-old, but one that stuck with me. I loved fishing as a little kid. I didn't really pursue it once I left home, not because I was scarred by the sink, senseless sink murder, but um, <laughs> I got busy, like we all do, and I got caught up in part-time jobs, short-term leases, dead-end relationships. I got caught up in everything and very artfully committed to nothing. Finally, one day, I was having coffee with a friend, and between yoga and work and nine other things, she looks at me and says, dude, you're a commitment phobe. Me? No. I'm super committed to all this stuff. I like to keep it interesting. I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> That excuse doesn't work everywhere, by the way. Dude, she says, you're a commitment phobe. We hugged it out. I finished my coffee on my way to the next thing. Not so sure that her accusations were entirely accurate, but she was right. I just wouldn't see that for a couple years. I moved up to Montana and um, wasn't really happy about it. I really wanted to be back in Boulder, um, so I didn't really invest in my life there. I didn't invest in my job or my friends or do any of the things I normally liked doing. I wasn't busy, but my butt was planted firmly on the metaphorical fence because I was terrified that if I committed in any way that was meaningful to anything or anyone, I'd get stuck. And I saw it. Doing too many things, doing nothing, were both ways to avoid commitment. And both ways made me really tired. Running around all the time, I understood. But doing nothing, I didn't quite get until I realized that I was spending as much energy staying out of everything as I did trying to stay in everything. I was a commitment phobe. And I realized something had to change. I had to do something, just one thing. And so I made a choice to invest. I lived on a river, which I know sounds terrible. Uh, so I decided to fish again. And I fished. Every day, I went down to the river and I learned a lot about water and knots and how to not fall down in my waders and bugs, which is a pretty big deal for someone who is terrified of spiders. Um, and I loved fishing and I loved the experience that I had out there, but there were still parts of it that distracted from this whole river runs through it thing I was trying to have going on. I didn't really like touching fish, which is a problem if you catch one. Uh, 
My dad had always kind of done that for me when I was little. Occasionally, I'd forget to press down a barb on a hook, and maybe I had to work to get the hook out. Maybe that fish didn't live, and maybe I took a few days away from the river to contemplate the reality of fly fishing as a blood sport. But I always went back, and I remembered my early childhood lesson on catch and release, and I got over my screw-ups, and eventually, the enjoyment of doing the thing far surpassed the frustrations of figuring it out. And I got that easy life on the river sense of freedom that I was after. And I still screw up. That's part of the deal. But I wouldn't trade what I get out of fishing for the uncomfortable missteps that happen every now and then. Commitment wasn't what was limiting me. It was the energy I wasted avoiding it. And I found that the balance of staying on the fence was far more limiting than the choice that had to be made. And now, I'm comfortable out there, and I have all this energy that I get back from fishing and the joy that I get out of it. I have more energy to put back into it, too. When I used to fish once, maybe twice a year, I'd see trash on the river and think, man, sucks. Hope somebody picks that up. And now the river is my place, and I feel a responsibility to take care of this thing that gives so much to me. I make a point to pick up trash. I make a point to press barbs. I make a point to handle fish responsibly and respectfully and minimize my impact on this resource that gives me so much. And I encourage other people to do the same. And I wouldn't have had the energy to put back in if I hadn't committed. If I had been doing nine other things, there's no way I would have ever gotten to a place where I got this much out of something. And I realized that it's our responsibility to take care of the things that we care about. And it's our responsibility to take care of ourselves, because our energy is as much of a resource as fish or land or water or animals. And if we start to view it as such, if we view our energy as a resource, then commitment isn't restriction, it's conservation at the most grassroots level. And that gives us far more freedom than we could ever find on the fence. Commitment isn't the death of freedom, it's the door to freedom, the freedom to do the things that we love. So make the choice, do the thing, conserve, commit.